has been a while since our last video and for that we apologize very much. Life's been hectic. <laughs> and while on that note, real quickly, just wanted to give a quick shout out to thank everyone who enjoyed our Poro video, reaching nearly 750 views as of yet. Ah! It's so exciting! Uh, so to all our returning viewers, it's good to see you guys. And to those who are new here, hi! I'm Bubbles, you'll get to meet Bruce here in a minute. And this is Kraken Gypsies! For today's video, we're going to jump right in and talk about expeditions from Legends of Runeterra. We figured a nice Q&A about it would be a good send off. Just a quick little catch up, they're basically another interesting way to earn rewards in the game, as uh, Bruce will explain. Hello everyone, this is Kraken Gypsies and I'm Bruce. So to start to get into expeditions, you obviously want to be in Legends of Runeterra, and then you want to go to the play tab and into expeditions, and then you would hit embark, and then you have the choice on what currency you wish to use to begin your expedition. It either takes 200 coins that they like to use, uh, which you pay for with real money, and or the shards that you use uh, to be able to get new cards, and or an expedition token. Basically, the expeditions consist of what they call trials, and there's two of them. After you hit begin trial, you are taken to what is this right here that shows three different sections of cards, and you get to pick what kind of cards you have for your deck. Kind of like how they do in Path of Champions, like when they when you're given um, reinforcements. However, this, you're literally building your deck from the ground up, so to speak, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're kind of discreet. Once you've gone through the first, what you'll see right here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But once you hit six without losing twice, uh, you'll enter what is called sudden death. Anyway, so this is what came for the rewards, which in my opinion, I, I honestly didn't know that this is what the rewards were before I did the Q&A. And on that note, if you guys are really curious as to what I said, Stay tuned. Alright, now that everyone's caught up, Bruce and I will give you guys our final thoughts on it from the perspectives of a more advanced player versus total beginner. How long have you been playing? I've been playing Terra since beta. I have been playing for a few months. <laughs> what was your initial take on Expeditions? Considering how long ago that was for me, I don't fully remember what my initial take was on Expeditions. So my initial take on Expeditions... Um, I'm not used to playing with people. I play against AI. Like, I already have the deck made, whereas I have to create the deck with people. Plus, most of the cards I don't even know. And it doesn't help that I don't know them, so I just do a lot of guesswork. <laughs> what do you suggest it to a new player? I feel like Expeditions has a very large learning curve, especially for new people who aren't as familiar with the cards as someone who has more experience. That being said, if they are only looking at that as a learning experience, perhaps? If not, then no, I think you'd be better off using your own cards. For those who want a challenge as far as your interior is concerned, then yes, I would suggest it to new players. What was your favorite thing? My favorite thing was to be able to pick a deck from randomly assorted cards and see how well I did. That was my favorite thing about the game mode. It's not rigged, and you actually have a chance of winning. <laughs> was there anything that you would change about the game mode? What I would change is how long it takes, especially whenever you have a ton of tokens. Of course, you can just retire and uh, you know surrender matches just to get fast rewards and to get the epic capsule from those tokens. Um, at the same time, if you wanted to play through it, I think it was very time consuming and that the rewards didn't get all that much better. So for me, it would just be like, instead of having it be like six matches where you win, if you get that far, have it be like three and make it more similar to Gauntlet. Honestly, not that I'm currently aware of. I, like I said, I haven't been playing long enough to really know. Did it help you learn new cards? For me, yes it has. It helped me learn and understand different kinds of gameplay and uh, play styles based on the cards I picked. It usually had pretty good meta options to, to pick from, and so I got to have like a little bit of a learning experience with that. 
Yes, it helped me learn new cards. Though, not exactly. It it did and it didn't. Like, I'll see new cards, I'll see what they're about, combined with others. However, my understanding of how they're used isn't always quite clear, so that's where it gets confusing. So I guess I get to figure out some new cards, and no, I, I still confused. <laughs> would you play it normally? If it took less time, yes, I would. What I end up doing was retiring most of my expedition token trials in order to get the epic capsule before the game mode was removed. I mean, if I guess if there was a way to interact more with the other person, other than like the simple emojis and whatnot, then yeah, I, I suppose it'd be more fun and interesting to have that and be more engaging as well. Well, going back to a previous question, yeah, that's something I would probably change, make it more interactive. Was it rewarding and worth your time? It feels rewarding in the sense that you're using your expedition tokens and the reward from that, the epic capsule, um, if you just, you know, retire and quit basically, that's worth it. However, to play through it, it didn't feel worth as much. Like, it, it seemed to have diminishing returns. And would it be worth the time to do so? To play through it if you're just, you know, doing something and you have fun with it, then yes. But I believe that's more of a personal preference. Oh, definitely. It got me to figure out that, for one, yes, AI is rigged. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> and AI is, in a lot of ways, harder to beat. <laughs> Was it too time consuming? I have previously answered this, and in my opinion, yes, it, it is too time consuming if you're going to play through the matches. It can definitely be time consuming. Did it help you learn different playstyles? For me, yes, since I wasn't able to afford getting all the cards to make those meta decks when they first were released because I'm pretty casual of a player. It did help me learn different playstyles. Yeah, it definitely helped me learn different playstyles, especially when it comes to landmarks and lurk, or like plunder, or deep. Those cards, I have a hard time with. Same with the ones with like the undying, I think that's it. The ones where you basically kill yourself off and yet that's how you buff your characters or buff your cards. That, that, that throws me off entirely. My brain just cannot wrap around that for some reason. <laughs> so it's interesting to see that in play. It's, it's a totally different experience of me trying that. Was the matchmaking too difficult? For me, the matchmaking was fine. I didn't have any real complaints about it. Too difficult? Probably most of the time. <laughs> because I'm going up against people who usually play the game against other people who actually know the cards for the most part and know how to play them and understand how they're played. Whereas I just usually play what I want. <laughs> Were the card options competitive and to your liking? The card options changed from my experiences. Like every time I played Expeditions, I'm pretty sure I had different cards. Although I've realized that like you can only pick from so many, they only have so many options and they try to make them relevant and competitive. Uh, to my liking, I would have wished there was more like Shadow Owls cards because I'm a fan of that region the most. Card options were not always to my liking. Nope. If there were cards that I knew how to play, I would pick those. And then there were cards, which were more, most of them, that I didn't know how to play. How difficult would you say the game mode was to understand as a new player? I didn't really get involved with it as a new player, although I think with the limited experiences I did have previously that I enjoyed it, but I didn't fully understand the purpose of it. As a new player, it's both easy and difficult. So as far as expedition goes, kind of just follow the signs and you figure it out. However, with not knowing a lot of the cards, then yeah, it would be pretty difficult to play. What would you rate the game mode compared to the Path of Champions and or to PvP game modes? I would probably give Expeditions 7 out of 10, personally. And the reason for it is because, like I said earlier, um, it didn't feel as rewarding to play through it. And whenever you crew so many tokens, it kind of gets obnoxious and old real fast, especially whenever you only have so many card options to pick from. I would give it a solid 5 out of 10. Like Path of Champions, you have your cards, you get to pick your reinforcements and whatnot. As a new player, you, you don't really know what half the cards do, so a lot of guesswork in the dark. However, you have time to figure them out if you're going up against AI. However, you can consistently do it over and over and over even if you die. Whereas with Expeditions, you cannot. You are given a certain amount of tokens, and that is it. If you win, yay, you get to go to the next one. 
and you have to try and keep winning. But if you die, you have you get one chance, and then you win, and then if you die, you get one chance to win again. But if you die twice, you're screwed. Did you have fun, and what was the most exciting experience that you've had? I had fun. Personally, the best experience I've had was winning, just barely. Like, those clutch victories did a lot for me. Personally, I think I'd also have more fun if it was less time consuming. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Though in some ways, again, it was a little exhausting because deadline. <laughs> uh, as I've stated before, it's interesting to go up against people with cards you don't know how to play. Do you want the game mode to stay? I like having content. I want the game mode to stay because it is content to some degree. Although if, again, you have most of the cards or all the cards are, are using the meta decks, uh, in more competitive play or ranked or what have you. I think the game mode is redundant within that situation. Although, like, you still have the epic capsule, which makes it kind of rewarding. And th that's more rewarding for people that don't have all the cards. If it had a better ranking system, probably. And, like, it would be, like, you know, have prizes of, like, skins or card covers or, like, pretty images or board designs. Or That'd be pretty cool. For, for me, that that's an incentive, actually, <laughs> to play more often, if that were the case. Rather than just getting cards, it's like, I want to get skins, I want a pretty board, <laughs> kind of thing. And that is it for this video! Thank you guys so much for watching! Go ahead and hit like if you guys enjoyed it. If you're new and like our content and wish to see more, hit that subscribe button and hang out with us on Twitch! And definitely let us know your thoughts on the expeditions, or at least your experiences down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. And with that, this is Bubbles saying bye bye Until next time, stay cracking!